making mesh for Animesh and building an armature for it. I'm going to create a cylinder. I'm going to make this a pole that I want to uh, animate in world to dance. So I'm going to make it with a one half meter radius. I'm going to make it 10 meters tall. And I'm going to now move it up by five meters so that it's sitting on uh, zero, zero, zero. Now, many objects are not uh, suitable for uh, animating because uh, they don't have enough vertexes to bend around. This has no vertexes in the middle. So I'm uh, looking at it with X-ray mode. I'm going to have to go into edit mode now. So in X-ray mode, I can select all these vertical parts of the cylinder and use the uh, subdivide tool to uh, subdivide it 31 times. So now I have uh, 31 rings plus the ends or 32 quadrangles. And so now this is appropriate for animating because it has what's called good topology. It has uh, many rings of uh, almost square quadrangles. And now, let's say this is the object that you want to animate. The next step is in object mode to add an armature. And it adds an armature. I need to go back into x-ray mode so that I can see it at 0, 0, 0, which is one reason why I put this uh, cylinder, uh, this pole right there with its bottom at 0, 0, 0, so that the first bone in the armature landed uh, right there. And it turns out that there are easy ways to set this up if your bones go exactly through the centers of your limbs. And so we're off to a good start here. Now, when I go into object mode now, I mean, when I go into edit mode now, I'm not editing the mesh anymore. I'm editing my armature. So I'm going to select the end of that, la that first bone that the armature created for me. And I'm going to use the ordinary tools. There are tools like move. I could move the bones around. I can rotate them. I can scale them. These are all tools that you're, you're used to uh, using on vertexes. It turns out they work on armatures as well, including the extrude tool. I happen to know that the shortcut for that is E. So it's pretty easy to hit E down here and extrude a new bone. And like a lot of other tools in Blender, you can type XYZ after you start a tool. I'm going to type Z and it lets you pull the bone straight up. And now it's going to stay right in the middle of our pole. And then I can also type one. That would be easy for me to just say, oh, I'm gonna hit E for extrude, and I'm gonna hit Z for straight up and one. And I could just do that uh, five more times and I have all the bones that I need. But let me show you several things that can go wrong. One of the things that can go wrong is, is that you, you can start to extrude and then you do something else that causes him to forget. Like I hit the right mouse button and I say, well, I'll just keep going. Well, it turns out when you, do, when you make mistakes like this, it typically leaves extra bones. So let me show you over here in the outliner. We want to open up armature. So now that we have an armature in the outliner, we find the armature and the first bone is named bone. And the second one is named bone one. And the th third one is named bone two. And there's a bone three, which you don't see over here. In, in the outliner, you can click on each bone and it selects them one at a time for you. And so we can select this invisible bone, which is hidden inside the top of the third bone. And I recommend that when you can't reach it like this, the safest thing to do is to delete it delete bones. So now we just have the bones we can see, bone, bone one, and bone two. So we can go back to extruding in Z one meter. And this time I'm going to remember to hit the left mouse button or enter. Either way, we'll, um, we'll end the extrude without leaving a, uh, a zero length bone there. 
Another thing that can that can go wrong is that if you select a bone out of the armature or select a bone by clicking on it and you think, well, it's safe to extrude now. When you extrude, oops, and you had the whole bone selected, you now have two bones, uh, one coming out the side of... Uh, of the head of this of the last bone and one coming out of the tail and in this case I don't want that extra bone and oh shucks if I hit escape he still created see that's uh, bone bone one bone two bone three yeah look he created a bone five and a bone four and I don't want either one of them so I'm gonna delete those until I get back to just the bones that I want. So bone three was the last one that I liked. And I am going to remember to select the tail of the bone and then hit extrude, then hit Z, then hit one. And remember to hit a left mouse button to, uh, to terminate it. E, Z, one, Enter, and as bones are added, they when you extrude them, they they always extrude attached to, parented to, and connected to the bone you extruded them from, and so the structure is being built for you is um, is just what you want, and this structure can be much more complicated than this, but we're just building a vertebra to go through the middle of our dancing pole. And you'll notice that I that I pulled the uh, the outliner wider in order to, to see these names because they were running off the edge of the screen. So select that last bone tail, extrude Z one. Don't forget to hit enter. And we have a bone six. So now we have our root bone, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six bones. Well, I'm going to stop the regular tools that you know how to use like I can select all the bones and hit scale and make it bigger and smaller but I want it to scale from zero so I'm going to tell him to scale from the 3d cursor and then if I look at it from the side I'll be able to scale from the cursor until my seven bones almost exactly cover my entire pole. We're not done by a long shot, but uh, I'm going to come back tomorrow with another video that picks up with OpenSim rules for the bones, parenting, and waiting.